All right, hello, welcome. My name is Jason Welsh, and welcome to another episode of Blender. In this episode, we're going to be handling UVs within Blender, uh, taking an object and unwrapping it. So, what we're going to do is get started. I got this knife, and this is basically the UV window. So let's start over from scratch. That way, we all know what's going on. Okay, how about I just close Blender all together and relaunch it? That way, it looks just like yours, and I can show you exactly what I would change. Um, within my workflow. Okay, first off, get rid of any objects by hitting X to get rid of them, and then import them as OBJs. In this case, I have this little knife, and import it using the basic import options here, just the default. Okay, things I would change along the way is the way we navigate around items within Blender. Okay, number one, I'm using um, a laptop computer which has no number pad whatsoever. So, I'm going to go in here and change a few things. Uh, that is user preferences. I will turn it on turntable. This makes it so I can revolve around the object rather easy. And if I go over to System OpenGL, I can emulate a number pad. Now if I hit 1, 3, or 7 on the keyboard, I can quickly go around the item. Let's go back to buttons mode. Another thing that's very handy is the UV image editor. You can right click anywhere on this line and it will ask you to split. It is kind of finicky at times, so you have to do this a couple times just to get this line. Now, over in this window, I'm going to choose UV Image Editor. Okay, over in this window, what I'm going to do is basically hit Tab on the keyboard. But first, right-click on the item, hit Tab. And you can see, if this is highlighted, there should be UVs over here. But there is not, because we haven't made any yet. Think about separating your object into many different materials. Okay, for example, the knife is actual steel. Uh, this guard right here is probably some kind of iron-like material. And then the handle is a leather wrap type deal. So that's three different materials here. This will make it easier to texturize later on. Okay, so let's go to Edge. Seeing through the item is a very hard thing to look at, so what I'm going to do is choose this option right here, which cell shades it very nicely. If I hold Alt and click right here on the item, it chops it in two all the way around. Okay, I'm going to break this item into many different shells, this being one of them. Control E will mark the seam for that shell. Another shell would start at the base of the knife. Control E, mark seam. Another one would be here, Control, and I'm holding Alt and right clicking to automatically go around the item. Control E, mark seam. That little shortcut's very handy. Okay, Alt, right click, Control E, mark seam. Easy as that. All you do is place your seams down, and then go to U on the keyboard. It helps to highlight the item first, so L as in lion, and then U on the keyboard to unwrap. And there we go. Automatically unwraps it. Now that was pretty easy, so let me cover a few things that I've learned throughout the time with Blender and doing UVs. Here's the first tip I'm going to give you. This button right here, Active Sync Mesh Selection amazing little button that doesn't look like much but when when you apply this if you see something wrong over in your UVs you can either highlight something on your geometry and it will highlight over here or you can highlight something on your UVs and it will highlight over here so very nice the fact that you can kinda reference what's wrong over in one area and it'll correspond to the 3D area that's a handy button. Um, another handy button is unclicking this 
and then go back in here and hit L on the keyboard. This button right here shows up if active sync is off. What this button does is allows me to grab whole shells very quickly. Okay, and here's how you move stuff in UV land. Um, if you hit G is to grab, so I can grab this, place it anywhere. So G to grab it, and then to place it and put it down, you hit left on the mouse. What I'm going to do is kind of give this some um, space between these, so when I do texturize it, it's going to be a little easier. So these two items, I'm going to just grab and scale just a little bit and put them right here. Now, usually you leave as little space as possible between your shells. Uh, the more space that you take up within these windows, uh, the better the texture is going to turn out. But in this case, I'm not going to lose too much just by moving these just a little bit. Also, I want to pull these away from the edge as much as possible. Like here, I have this UV actually resting outside. Blender is known to do this. So G to move this in. And I'm going to scale it a little bit in so it fits within this window quite well. Okay, maybe separate these shells just a little bit. There we go. All right, so your UVs are done. Now, in the next video, what I'm going to do is bake an ambient occlusion map and um, lay out some textures on the item. I'll show you how to use an ambient occlusion to bake shadows within your object. Alright, and that's in the next video.